What we have here is a bomb factory. <laughs> this is a good way to get the NSA flag on to us, uh, right? See, it will be in that residential. <laughs> residential centers. <laughs> Soon as you move it. Oh. Uh, uh. Apollo 1 put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap. And we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. It was a few days before Christmas 1968 when Apollo 8 sat on the pen. She was the first of us. Captain and the communications are go. flows into the Arctic, Antarctic Ocean. Go to the dry valleys where it hasn't snowed or rained for over a hundred years. On the warmest day, it's sort of 20 below Celsius. Just try that for a couple years and see if it really grabs you. You know, in Florida, you walk around, fruit falls off the trees. I mean, it's just, there's fresh water everywhere, the occasional alligator. But uh, generally, it's pretty, uh, if I may, easy living for humans. But on Mars, it's not that way. And do you know why? Because we're not adapted for it. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. Heckling, thank you. Mars has changed. Something has changed radically on the planet Mars the last couple billion, three billion years. And the MAVEN mission is uh, on its way, will be on its way tomorrow to help us find out another few facts about why that is. And I'll walk you guys, I love acronyms as much as the next guy. What am I now? Leader in chief? That's fabulous. You can call me EIC. <laughs> But uh, the MAVEN is this fabulous acronym for Mars Atmospheric Volatile Evolution. <laughs> We're all watching shadows. If you've ever been to a meeting of these people, it is exciting. Is that, are there any accountants here? The accounting people? You know how they can party, you know how crazy it is. You get the accountants. Well, the Sundown people are just all watching. <laughs> Oh, look, did you see it moving? It moved like that far. Did you see it? The shadow. So uh, anyway, I I thought as a rebellious teenager, I thought I was uh, had not been involved in this. I did not pay attention to the sundial thing. But come to find out, maybe I was uh, paying attention by accident. Uh, one of my father's great ideas was to make the Washington Monument into a giant sundial. And I gotta say, it would be pretty good. And you know, by the way, NASA employees, you know, we could do the same thing with some of these rockets, all right? You put, you put big uh, markers out on the National Mall. Uh, they might be big stone things with statues. There's a lot of statues in Washington, D.C. You can have generals from various conflicts. You can have some statesmen. Uh, there's not really any now, but those are historical. <laughs> And, uh, oh, cheap shot. Is it really? Is it really? No. You guys, I'm the CEO now of the Planetary Society, an organization created by Carlson. Yes, Planetary Society. But look, if I, I serve, as we say, at the pleasure of the board of directors, all right? If I walked in and said, I don't agree with you guys, I'm shutting the place down. They fire me, right? So if we hire these guys to run the government. We're shutting it down. Okay, you're all fired, right? Woo! Right. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Terry, it's not partisan. Just to tell you, as if it would be a much more stand. All right. On the national mall, we would have these big stones, plinths. Anybody play Scrabble? Plint is a great word. out there and what I'd like you to do it's a very bright
bright day, but I guess you have to use your imagination. At the base of the Washington Monument uh, is this concrete apron at, uh, down there. By the way, the Washington Monument is covered in scaffolding, scaffolding right now. But, uh, we didn't have a word for this. There's a little bit of a bluish tinge, and that, that comes from the Earth's sky. We did not have a word in English for this, so I had to make it up. Seer lessons. Now I see a lot of white shirts. I see the white programs. Take, make a shadow on this right now. I'm not kidding, because we have a pretty blue sky day. And you'll see the shadow is blue. But if you look closely, and maybe at my power of suggestion, you'll see that it's also ever so slightly light blue. And that light blue color comes from the sky. And most of us go through our whole lives without really being able to articulate it. I mean, we all know that daylight looks different from moonlight, but most of us can't exactly see why that is. And a lot of it is the seer from the Earth's sky. So, uh, I was uh, very interested in this uh, later on. I uh, <laughs> realized that I was not in control. I took a pizza box last uh, summer before last and made a sundial out of it. I uh, last summer took a uh, beer carton. Uh, then I found, I found. Uh -huh. And there you see is the sand dial. In, in this picture, it's 50 years old, five zero years old. It still works. Go figure. And at this point, uh, you might be wondering if the guy creating these things isn't suffering from some sort of uh, SOD, some sort of sundial obsessive disorder. Because see, you reach a point where everything should be made, that, that casts a shadow, should be made into a sundial. Those flagpoles, certainly every one of these rockets could easily be a sundial. But I got invited to, uh, oh sorry, uh, uh, this is an old problem because this is a picture from the Viking mission, Viking one mission to Mars, back in the disco era. 1976. Uh, you might be, for those of you who love literate in that era, you might be uh, working at the car wash. You might be kung fu fighting. Uh, you might, you might uh, ring my bell. You might ring my bell in those days. She had one hit. You got to respect that. It's more than I've had. So uh, anyway, they had. This is the first picture, the first complete picture sent back from Mars from the Viking mission, astonishing picture. Whenever I look at pictures like this, I'm amazed because it looks like you could just walk around. You'd, uh, you'd have to wear something warm. It's very cold there, even at noon. And uh, you take some food, it's a camping trip, food. And uh, you know, uh, if you, I mean, we're in Florida, it's very warm here, but if you go to a department store where they sell women's stockings, it's uh, one of those colors on the upper right. <laughs> I, uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't wear women's stockings. I, I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. I, I uh, so, they had this problem. They had corrected electronically, and they didn't want to have this problem again. So in uh, 1996, as they were getting ready, they, we, it, was getting ready to launch the next rover to Mars. You know, we went over 20 years without another landing on Mars because of something. Because the man did not feel that it was worth doing. But I went to a meeting, and through the success of the Science Guy show, I went to a meeting at Cornell University, because I was, uh, I, you may not know this, I was graduated from Cornell through some sort of wonderful uh, clerical error. <laughs> I don't know, I, I go back there, you know, now and then, I do, I meet with students, there's no way they would let me to Cornell now. It was clearly an oversight. But I went to a meeting, and they had this thing there, a picture of the thing. And it's, you know, you can see it's a, it's a great thing. Uh, but this is the photometric calibration target. So the idea they were going to point the camera at this thing and get the colors right. And the trick they were going to use was to cast a shadow with this metal post, this metal stick. 
And uh, even in this light, I think you can see it. Uh, I was taking it in an oven with a light bulb, just like the light Easy bulb bake. in your oven. <laughs> And uh, it casts a, a very yellow light. There's not as much blue in it as with a light emitting diode. And so we did not have this word, it's this yellowish tint. So I had to make it up. Sandvedescence for a ca tinge of yellow. Come on, people, it starts with an X. Come on. It's a sexy word. <laughs> wow. And so, uh, but I was, uh, even then, an engineer with a license, and I just questioned this idea of sending something all the way to Mars just to cast a shadow. I mean, there's antennas all over the thing, and little wire wave brackets, and dog screw heads, and ribbon heads, and come on. But after a few minutes, I realized that we could turn the photometric calibration target into a sundial. Yes! You know, we can cast shadows on Mars and reckon Mars time. It's like those people, almost all men, who speak Klingon. <laughs> Except it'll be real. And so Steve Squire, so I may be here tomorrow, Jim Bell will be here tonight. After a couple days, these principal investigators on the Sojourner rover said, okay, man, so uh, uh, on the Mars Exploration Rover, Spirit and Opportunity, there are sundials. Uh, this is Husband Hill, named after Rick Husband, one of the guys killed in the uh, Columbia wreck, space shuttle wreck. And it's a place, I mean, if you get, were dressed right proper minutes and hours and days and weeks, you get a huge amount of change in speed. It's not like the rockets that you and I are familiar with, where, like tomorrow, where it'll fire for a few minutes and turn off and coast all the way to Mars. This thing would be on running for weeks. Uh, by the way, this particular proposal would take about a sixth of the world's supply of xenon, a uh, world's production of xenon per year. That's a uh, that's a lot of xenon. I'm not saying it's not worth it. Getting hit with an asteroid would be kind of a drag. But, the idea is that we'll go out there with astronauts, maybe some of you guys, and chip away at the surface of astronauts, bring back some samples as we did with the moon, and we'd learn more about asteroids and the, how the solar system formed, and then we'd learn more about ourselves, our place in space. For me, though, this is a lot of messing around to get pieces of asteroid. We have other missions that get pieces of asteroid. So, if we want to deflect an asteroid... Howdy, everybody in YouTube land. Finally got me a hotel room in Florida. Uh, doing a couple jobs down here at XL Sports Soccer and Orange County Park and Rec and stuff like that, doing scoreboard installs. Been bouncing around from house to house, and I finally decided, heck with it, I'm getting a hotel. And I finally get a hotel, and listen to this. Tornado outbreak. Back home. It's kind of ironic. We never see tornadoes. We leave tornadoes, you know, in the Midwest, whatever. So, get home. I'm going to walk into a mess. I don't know if my house has gotten wiped out or what right now. I doubt it. Somebody would have called me. I know there's no power at home right now because um, Stephen, a buddy of mine, called me. See, that's home. Or, oh, you can't really see that. But. Anyway, so, yeah, we never get tornadoes. Never get, hardly get severe weather. I leave home one time and a tornado outbreak hits. Like, really? Are you serious? Mostly Illinois got hit. And that's where UXW Bill and Weasel 2 HTM live. And I don't know how they're doing. I need to check on their YouTube channels and find out. Make sure those guys didn't get hit. Um, anyway, speaking of YouTube, I can't get on because I have no Wi-Fi here. They want you to pay for it at this motel. So, don't come here. <laughs> oh, I got some more surprises in store, too. Not only did I get a chance to come to Florida to do some work, I actually went to Kennedy Space Center and met Bill Nye. That was awesome because I used to watch Bill Nye when I was a kid. And I got to his conference and I'm going to have a few snippets of his video footage coming up soon. He uh, discussed about different methods of redirecting asteroids. I'll tell you what. 
off on a tangent here. I went to the Kennedy Space Center, went to the tour, seen some of it before they closed today, and everybody is talking about asteroids and, you know, ways to divert them, and I think they're hinting around, and I think we have an asteroid on the way that's going to collide with Earth, and they're trying to come up with ways to get around it, because the guy that drove the bus tour said something about asteroid in two years. And I'm thinking, huh? I never heard anything about an asteroid. People were hinting around about with asteroids, and I don't know what to expect. But Bill and I talked about, you know, asteroids. But I digress. He talked about asteroids. He talked about uh, sundials, how his dad was in um, the war, Pearl Harbor. They, he was held prisoner in Japan. You know, it was, he got into that, he got into a few things. You might be able to find his footage on the NASA channel or possibly some other YouTube channels where people filmed it. It was great. I loved it. You know, I wanted to meet him for the longest time and finally had the opportunity to do it. It was great. So, that's pretty much a quick update on this Sunday. Uh, thank you for watching. Howdy in YouTube land. Those are going to go up. Let's see. One of them is going to go over there. Actually, I don't know if you can see the trees or not. Oh, there we go. I think that's an old deck board. I'll give you some more, and we're probably going to set up a uh, post there to build them. Yeah, that's where the other board's going to go. Over there is the control dugout, the control table. I'm going to put another board in over there. And the other board's back there. So, and then we got our table all set up. Control consoles, drivers. We've got the silicone drying on the control console. And all the ribbon cables made. Now we got to start assembling the boards. Howdy everybody in YouTube land. Finally got uh, board number one up. I gotta watch myself because there's some ga there's gators that hang around in this territory. I don't need my ankle bit off. Wildlife is pretty crazy in this part of Orlando. Anyway, there's the old board laying on the ground. Um, board number two, I'm not having much more luck because this one was working earlier today and it just dropped out. Well, got the programmer out and hooked it up to this guy. Was able to read the radio settings and set those. Um, so then I fired this guy up and begun to set that radio up and I couldn't read it. As, I, as you can see, I got the programmer plugged into there. Um, there's the radio. It's actually a Digi International 9X10. These suckers are $179 a piece. And these are brand new. And guess what? Dead already. So, as you can tell, failed. Please try to reset and again. So, not good. And the only thing I can think of is maybe the baud rate has changed because then I have to have my low level programmer to set that because this guy is only set to communicate at 57.6 baud. And these are initially programmed at 9600 baud. So, I program those initially and then once they're in there I can actually set it into a loopback mode which is what that center LED is and that allows me to program the radio while it's in circuit. I can do the same thing over here. So, oh, I don't think I did a video on this part but there's my uh, adapter board. Goes in here like so. And that's it. This guy plugs into there. There's a header. Plugs in there. And then the antenna cable screws on. That's all there is to it. Doesn't work very good this far away.
Woo! Almost got me. Another crater. Hello everybody in YouTube land. I'm on top of the world. I'm actually on the hospital building of a hospital in Orlando, Florida. There's the Orlando helipad. This is crazy. Got my engineering badge. It's nuts. That's a long ways down. There's downtown Orlando. Off in the distance is the Boone High School we did a scoreboard for. This is what's going on the wall. This is why we're up here. So anybody in the Ori Orlando area sees this on the hospital, you'll know where it come from. Oh, that make you lightheaded. So when you drive down the road and you see the Orlando Regional Medical Center banner, which is laying right here on the side of the building, you know that we'll put it in. We're the ones that did it. I'm not going down there and doing it. I'm just going to stand here and watch the ropes be a safety. That's it. So, yeah, it's going to go on the side of that wall facing this road going that way. So, yeah, I get to watch the helicopters land. The first one that comes in. I have no idea what building that is. But surprisingly, I have excellent cell service up here. <laughs> Imagine that. Full bars 4G. So, yeah. Weather vanes. It's a crazy amount of security clearances you have to go through to get up here. But, I mean, that's going to be natural, of course. So, uh, I'll see you later when it's done. They could almost put a wind turbine up here. Back on the ground now and he's way up there. Out here service one of these bastards. Citizens Bank of Florida. Galaxy LED sign made by Dectronics. It's dead. No primary power. There's the breaker, line noise filter, power supplies for all the drivers and shit. And then there's the main control board running by an embedded power PC processor. 200 megahertz. Fans. And let's switch over here. So. Let's get this thing working, shall we? Hmm. Uh, so I guess the uh, ballast is bad. It's earth. Shorted to earth. Up in the uh, top side. Ah. Now we're here at XL Soccer. Doing a repair. He's up there on a ladder. One of the horn relays was bad, so we had to replace it. Think that helped. Ah, a little 
but I'm over here, already there in YouTube land. It is Wednesday, November um, 20th, 2013. I'm staying at the hotel in DeLand, Florida. Uh, tomorrow is going to be our last day. The hotel is oh, Clarion. Uh, so actually I'm here because another irritating inconvenience trip because I'm dealing with somebody as a business partner that has family here. And not only does do we have to do work, but he also wants to take side time and go visit his family. I cannot fault anybody for wanting to go see their family. I really can't. But it's just very inconveniencing, you know. But there wasn't a whole lot we could do anyway because most of all of our jobs are caught up. So anyway, the Orange County Park and Rec job, which was in this video, we ran into problems. Fail after fail after fail. Big problem was the vinyl wasn't done on one of the boards. The out is missing. Number two, um, one of those radios was bad, as you've seen earlier. Uh, and we're still missing two radios. Okay, and it gets better. We place an order for three radios. They're $179 a piece, plus we have to have it overnight shipped uh, tomorrow morning AM, which is FedEx, and it's like another 80 bucks to do that. Uh, and to make it even worse is the defective radio, the, to do the RMA on it, the radio, because he, he's got an F1, a 2005 F-150, and you got that little pocket in the center of the dashboard. Well, he had to hit, the, he had to make a quick stop because someone turned out in front of him. The radio slid across the dashboard, landed between the dashboard and the window, and fell underneath the dashboard. It ain't never coming out. So we lost that. That was 180 bucks in the garbage. So we've been having a lovely time. And then there was bugs in the firmware because you see where it says guest and home? Well, there's the console from my house. <laughs> What's wrong with that picture? Home on the left, guest on the right. Well, when Glenn did the overlay, he did guest on the left and home on the right. So I had to go in the firmware and completely redo everything. And that was fun. Um, but anyway, we've got one failed radio, two missing radios, so we had to order three. Um, so right now I'm actually hooked up to the RS-485 port um, through the cable into the computer, and I'm running it on the drive emulator, you know, just to make sure everything is working correctly. This is a simple little program I wrote in Visual Basic 6, because I don't know VB.net and... I'm thinking about moving away from VB6 anyway because as you can tell the Windows Desktop Manager won't run correctly on the VB6 IDE. So in order to get around this is uh, I had to disable uh, WDM, you know, or uh, Desktop DWM, this Windows Desktop Manager, and so it goes, it defaults, it turns off Arrow obviously, and it defaults back into GDI mode, which is legacy now. Uh, that's the only way things work correctly. The app itself will run fine in Aero, but the IDE won't. So I'm going to move to like Zojo, otherwise known as Real Basic, Real Studio, because it cross compiles to other platforms. So I'm thinking about doing that. Anyway, so um, without further ado, there's the inning. And then there's the ball strike out. Of course, you can't see the. Um, in segments on the screen because this program doesn't support you know seven segment it just shows a number and if anything that's you know outside of a normal seven segment digit it'll just put a, uh, a dash mark there so anyway there's that uh, and then here's oh yeah it gets better um, here's another thing where he screwed here's another reason why it's failed okay and, and, it, and it's not my fault it might be partly my fault but it's mostly his fault um, Okay, there's the radio. Okay, do you see an obvious problem here? Because I damn sure do. Uh, you see the RPSMA or reverse polarity SMA connector? See how close it is to the edge? Well, obviously I can't get an antenna cable on there because it hits the edge. So he already knew that. So what's he do? He orders right angle adapters. Well, you put the right angle adapters on it, it only screws up to about here. 
which means the right angle adapter sticks out to about right here. So um, it would not fit in the case. So, and I'm like, well, just go ahead and drill a hole in the case. And he's like, no, I don't want to do that. Do you have to have an antenna? Do you have to have an antenna? I kept telling him, I said, dude, okay, here's the problem. Uh, that radio puts out one watt of power, okay? Well, we all know in the electronics land, one watt with no load, in other words, infinite impedance, um, is bad because you get reflections back into the final and you blow the final. But he wants to run it without an antenna. But I told him he can't do that. And it didn't work. You know, imagine that. So what we did to get around this problem, temporarily, ugly as hell, is we drilled a hole in the side, stuck the antenna cable out, and wrapped it back inside, and just put the antenna there. So, uh, I mean, we could have... Well, I don't know if it would work correctly, but it just didn't. Yeah. Anyway, that just it's just not going to work right. So we just went ahead and did it the way um, he come up with that idea. I come up with just cutting, you know, that down and moving the whole assembly over and leaving a gap here, but it would offset everything to the right and then you would have to figure out a way to fill in that gap and it would have just been ugly as hell so we just did it that way so guess what I get to do I get to drill holes in all three of these and do the same thing to these three that he did to this one so that is a quick update at the Clarion Hotel in Deland Florida the saga continues